You're here, you gotta send it. <laughs> We're gonna go visit our friend Adrian. And Adrian has new toys. So we're going to go check it out on this day that is 18 degrees out here in New Jersey. So what do you do if it's too cold outside to ride and you don't have heat or you don't have an enclosure? The winter months, not all of the trails are open anyway. So in this case, Adrian took us for a ride down to the local hobby store to do a little bit of indoor rock climbing with his remote control cars and trucks. So we'll take you on adventure for some of the indoor fun you can have when it's too cold. Random lunch, Red Lobster on the way. So Adrian got everything loaded up and we walk through the store area. They have quite a collection. We will uh, give you a little bit of view of that later. Right into the track area with benches to work on and to get yourself all set up to do some riding. So it's pretty cool here. They have a full track that we're going to try. And this is for RC cars of the pro style, I would believe. We'll have Adrian tell us a little bit about it. But there's also a bridge and catwalk, whatever you want to call it, wood bridge. And then uh, some tunnels and a bathtub here, I guess. But uh, definitely. Looks a lot more fun than breaking the full size ones, but definitely cool. Some people riding drifting cars over here. But we thank, we thank Adrian for having us out here. All his toys charging and uh, everything's good and uh, dirty, except he broke a clutch on that one. The Beaten Trail is sponsored by Ride Royal Blue ATV Resort in Pioneer, Tennessee, where all of your Tennessee adventures begin. Lodging for any budget, bring your RV, or stay in a cabin. Trails are attached to the resort and not a far drive on ATV legal pavement. So stop down at Ride Royal Blue in Tennessee. What kind of runtime do you get? You just gotta make sure you don't go in it. No, I'm going in it. You waterproof? <laughs> Water resistant. Well, it had been a long time since I played with remote control cars, and when I did, they were either gas powered or they were two wheel drive. So to see some of these in action was pretty cool. Of course, it is not an inexpensive sport. Uh, you could wind up paying four or five hundred bucks for these uh, new. I'm guessing you can get some of them used. As from what I had uh, discussed with one of the other individuals that were riding around the track the same day. Of course, waterproof and water resistant are two different things. So. And you want to make sure that you have all your gaskets sealed. And Adrian explained to us that, yes, there is a little bit of damage that can be done from a high fall. And you can also get water damage. So you want to make sure that everything is sealed properly. I would not submerge my ride all the time. But if it's an off-road vehicle, then you should make sure you have the precautions. And I don't even know what it says in the manual if they recommend you stay out of water or not but snow and mud probably is just as much fun as opposed to the dry so you have to make your choice we gave this a shot and at first you don't succeed try try again of course 
I was just paranoid in winding up breaking something of Adrian because each of these is a bit expensive. But it's pretty cool to come here to the hobby shop. You can rent your time uh, indoors, and I think it probably was $15 or $20. It depends if it's a weekend or weekday. This was a weekday. Really wasn't busy. Of course, you probably could have five or six vehicles out on each of these tracks, and they also do offer a slick floor-based track if you want to do drifting. Now, in most cases, you will bring your own ride here, and you'll bring your battery charger and your batteries and any tools that you may have. They pretty much just provide the track. Now, you can also rent two-wheel drive racing cars for the track, which we'll show you a little bit later. That was, I believe, it was $35 for a half hour. I can be wrong on that. But it was the controller, the car, and one battery charge. And that lasted a half hour or longer on a racing car on, on slicks. But I would believe that the batteries on this four-wheel drive truck, they're putting out a lot more torque, carrying a lot more weight. They would not last the full half hour. But maybe. Uh, there's all different capacities of batteries they're very much more smaller than they were when we used to ride these uh, at a younger age but as you can see you can have a bit more experience than you would out in the snow batteries will run longer because they're not cold outdoors much like anything else that you may put in freezing temperatures into the bathtub. course we had to give it a shot as well. I know like I said without going into the whole thing I know they sell them here for like five hundred dollars for a, a basic kit. What are these? What model are they? Any idea? Um, who makes they're them? all different. They're all different. So this one is a Traxxas TRX4. It's a 10th scale model four-wheel drive. It's got a few more options. It's got like diffs that unlock and other stuff. This is an Axial SCX-10, another 10th scale one. Um, it's the Jeep, but uh, it's um, it's a little more basic than the TRX. It's a little bit cheaper kit. I'm going to say, yeah, they're like four or five, 400 or 500 something bucks. And uh, that one over there next to you is a Red Cat. Uh, what did he call this again? A red cat. That's the brand. But I mean, as far as it was a, it was a. It's a tenth scale as well. Scout. It's just mm -hmm. a, it's a scout. Uh, yeah, all all the bigger ones here are tenth scale. I do have some smaller scale that I brought with me, but uh, this one's just a different brand. Red cat, tenth scale. It's their version of it. Okay. But they're all crawlers, just a little bit different features, a little bit different stuff. That nice. one over there is an Axial Capra. It's got a bunch of mods done to it. And that's and more of a, a rock bouncer type yeah, of thing. Yeah. It kind of makes the stuff out here a little bit too easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it just well, goes I was over trying everything. When I was trying with uh, with this guy down here. Yeah. So this one's an FMS, I believe, tent scale. Um, it's uh, just another brand. It's not quite as nice as Axials and the TRXs, but a little bit more budget friendly. I want to say these are three and change 
uh, to start. And so if somebody wanted to start something like this, they could pay $400 and you get a battery and no, a kit or whatever. No battery so you get no battery, the battery's like $60, $100 mm -hmm. each? Or? Yeah, it depends. You can get them off the internet nowadays, yeah. like Chinese brands for a fraction of that. And right. honestly, that's what I'm running here. And they do pretty well for me. There's like these Z batteries. There's a couple other different brands that work pretty well. But if someone cool. wanted to just have a one battery and a charger, everything, the charger is $150. Probably. Battery, probably $100. Yep. And then so you're probably in for five, 600 bucks base unit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Without so spare parts and patch kits and start, light right? bars and oh, winches. Oh, yeah. All <laughs> kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, the wheels alone on this one, they're pro line with like three piece pro line wheels. They're I think one hundred and eighty dollars for, for the wheels and wheels and tires. Okay, no you spare know? included. No, no, <laughs> with just four of them. You know, that's pretty cool though. Yeah, it's got. It's funny the transmission slipping in this one because it does have an upgraded transmission in it. Got upgraded shocks. Um, and and when you say links. upgraded transmission, are they steel gears? Steel gears, no fluid, no nothing. No, they're dry inside of there. Yeah, but the other ones have like plastic gears that have to mesh, and they constantly wear out. So this has steel gears inside of there, so they last a little longer without having to screw with it. Usually, but today was not my day without. And how much of a fall could it take? I know we were going up on the death-defying mountain pass. This one. It is a little bit beat up. The body's a little bit beat up, but uh, it fell off of the uh, it fell off of the top of the bridge. Off the bridge, yeah. On one side, so it was probably maybe like a six foot drop, eight foot drop. But they're meant to tumble down yeah. a hill and yeah. you know take. It. I mean, it cracks it. This one fell off the top of the waterfall and it put a little crack in it right there. Mm -hmm. You know, so eventually they get damaged and stuff. But and somewhat water resistant, but not underwater. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So like this one here, all the important electronics are inside this box right here and it's screwed down. It has a gasket all the way around the inside okay. and the backside where the wires go in, there's a little gasket inside nice. of there too. That's so cool. it does a pretty good job of keeping the water out of it, but. So, but okay. So how many do they, do they talk about how many cycles those batteries have? Do they have like a hundred cycles no or no, a year or two worth, that. a year or two worth of charging and discharging? I don't know. I've had batteries last me years and years. I've had some batteries last a year. But it's not like I play with them every day. They get cycled through maybe every couple, every month or two, you know. I usually break them out. Like, it's not, fortunately, this place is two hours from the house. You know, if it was 10 yeah. minutes from the house, I'd yeah. frequent. <laughs> You'd be here. It's cheaper to fix these. Is it cheaper to fix these than the full it's size? It's a lot cheaper to fix these than my side-by-side. -side. Especially Polaris. That thing will suck you dry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Very now nice. that I'm on a Yamaha. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do you have you? I didn't look in the store. Do they sell side by side frame, like uh, soft top to? I think that Lozy, one of the brands, makes a side by side. I think it's a Can Am too. Yeah. I think that's an X3. Yeah. I don't know if he has it in. There I'll have to take a look in there just to see. Yeah, I'll have to look around and see. What I've seen the got. cheap. You know, when you go into Walmart, you see the plastic ones. But oh, I just yeah. didn't know if yeah. I didn't know if they made. Uh, there is a hobby grade one. Yeah. I think Lozy makes it. And I've only seen a k and I'm sure there's someone that makes a razor, but I've only seen the k and one myself. Very cool. Um, yeah, it's a fun hobby. It's definitely cheaper, you know. You can get a pair of them for 70, 80 bucks. Where, you know, the Axel and yep. my razor is 300, two, 300 bucks. So charge time versus run time on the batteries. Well, I mean, we've been here for hours now, right? What time is it? We've been here for 30. A couple yeah. hours already. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the first batteries we went through. So, but I mean, it'll and take 30 minutes to charge and you'll get 30 to, I mean, we were yapping, hours. we were yapping and stopping and yeah. taking pictures and Maybe stuff. Maybe like so. an hour a piece, I would think. Yeah. Because we, I ran this one a little bit. Yeah, because you're, you're doing sporadic and, yeah. and high torque, low torque. You're not suddenly all out mm -hmm. like racing. Yeah, yeah. Like my fast ones, I mean, you get 20, 30 minutes out of them and you're doing good. Yeah. But it's just so much power draw all at once that it just eats through batteries. Where That's this very is cool. a little bit more, you know, a little bit slower pace on off. And, uh, and you got all the usual tools and uh yeah try and be self-sufficient whenever i come to places so i bring my little toolboxes and screws and all kinds of extra parts and, all. Mm -hmm. and hopefully i don't get a uh, stuff not being able to play and they don't and they don't say and these are not rechargeable you can get rechargeable you can get rechargeable for it i just got regular double a's in them but as far as know, frequencies or whatnot they Amazon batteries. they tell you what frequency it's yeah i'm honestly not sure what frequency it runs on um I know you have to pair the remotes and yeah. the receiver, but it's together. not a blue. It's not a Bluetooth. It's like a no. It's, it's an actual a, like a, a RC frequency, forty-nine megahertz or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even know. It's been ages since I 
yep. played with anything remote control. So I, I, I'm sure I'm really out of touch. I'm sure it's sped, it's spread spectrum. Awesome, yeah, fun day. Yeah. So it's got three cells in it, so it keeps all the cells at home. Um... A different style of off-roading for indoor or when it's too cold out. I'm sure there's a lot of information to collect on this, but this is just a short look at what kind of racing and rock climbing you can do indoors when the temperature is too low to be outdoors on the trails. They have a wide selection of rides and parts, and they can answer all the questions that you may have. And once again, we appreciate Adrian for fun. taking us for some indoor rock climbing. Yeah, very climbing. cool. We ask that you please click on our Amazon links before you go shopping. It helps to support the channel. Big thanks again to our sponsor, Ride Royal Blue. We appreciate them as well as all of our partners for being along for the ride. Be sure to get over to Lit Industries for the brightest rock lights you can find. And check out some of our hats and shirts over at our merchandise page. Thanks again for watching and we hope to see you out there on the trail. Thanks. Oh.